I share my screen. Today we are going to read uh, from uh, third chapter, 43rd verse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before this, before starting, we'll seek blessings from the previous Acharyas and the Sambal Vaishnavas. You can also offer prayers with me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Agnihanati Miranda Syagyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shjam Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganara Guna Tan vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna padan sahagana lalita shri vishakan vitam sham he krishna karuna sindhu dina bando jagatpati gopesha gopika kanta radha kanta namostate tapta kanchana gaurangi radhe vrindavanishwari vrishabhano sute devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rupya Shakrupa Sindhubya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namon Namaham Namahum Vishnu Padhaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutali Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pachatya Deshatarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, reading Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, forty third verse. You can repeat after me. Evam Buddha Param Buddha. Evam Buddha Param Buddha. Sumstabyatma, <laughs> Some step yard, ma'am. Some step yard, ma'am. Asmana. Jehi shetrum mahabaho. Jehi shetrum mahabaho. Kamarupam durasadam. Kamarupam durasadam. Evam buddhi param buddha. Evam buddhi param buddha. Some step yard, ma'am. Asmana. From Stabyatmana Manamana Jehi Shetrum Mahabaho Jehi Shetrum Mahabaho Kamarupam Durasadam Kamarupam Durasadam Anyone would like to recite the verse? Evam Buddha Param Buddha Evam Buddha Param Buddha Some Stabyat Manam Atmana Samstabhyatmana Matmana Jehi Shetram Mahabaho Jehi Shetram Mahabaho Kama Rupam Durasadam Kama Rupam Durasadam Evam Buddha Param Buddha Evam Buddha Param Buddha Samstabhyatmana Matmana Mahabaho. 
కామరూపం దురాసదం కామరూపం దురాసదం స్టడింగ్ Atmanam Atmanam The mind The mind Atmana Atmana By deliberate intelligence By deliberate, By deliberate intelligence. intelligence Jahi 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 Conquer Conquer Shatrum Shatrum The enemy The enemy Mahabaho Mahabaho O oh, mighty armed one O oh, mighty, oh, mighty armed, armed one. one Kama roopam Kama roopam In the form of lust In the form of lust Durashadam Durashadam Formidable Formidable Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai translation the knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses mind and intelligence oh mighty armed arjuna one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence krishna consciousness and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust purport this third chapter of the bhagavad gita is conclusively directed to krishna consciousness by knowing oneself as the eternal servitor of the supreme personality of godhead without considering impersonal voidness the unlimited end sorry, the ultimate end the in the material existence of life one is certainly influenced by propensities for lust and desire for dominating the resources of material nature desire for overloading and for sense gratification is the greatest enemy of the conditioned soul but by the strength of krishna consciousness one can control the material senses the mind and the intelligence one may not give up work and prescribe duties all of a sudden but by gradually developing krishna consciousness one can be situated in a transcendental position without being influenced by the material senses and the mind by steady intelligence directed toward one's pure identity this is the sum total of this chapter in the immature state of material existence philosophical speculations and artificial attempts to control the senses by the so called practice of yogic postures can never help a man towards spiritual life he must be trained in krishna consciousness by higher intelligence thus and the bhakti vedanta purports of the purports to the third chapter of the shrimad bhagavad gita in the matter of karma yoga or the discharge of one's prescribed duty in krishna consciousness so let's see the words so before starting this verse so so far we heard from 36th verse number 36 in from the third chapter krishna arjuna asks the question from 37 verse uh, krishna uh, gives the answer for the question and first krishna explains the problem and the uh, root cause of the problem and next krishna gives the solution how can we overcome that problem so in 36 arjuna uh, let's go through like you know lie on the to to come to the conclusion to understand the solution properly so i want to go through from 36 like you know outline so in 36 arjuna asks the question um, or descendant of krishna by what is one impelled to sinful acts even unwillingly as if engaged by force so what makes one uh, condition soul to do the sinful activity sometimes like by force so in 37 kama esha krodha esha rajo guna samudbavah mahasano mahapapma vidhinam hivairinam krishna gives an answer saying that one it is lust only arjuna which is born in contact of the with the material mode of passion so and later transformed into wrath and which is the all devouring sinful enemy of this world 
so one word answer for the question is it's lust and how the lust takes birth so krishna explained by the with the contact of the mood of passion material mood passion so in this mode in this material nature there are three modes goodness passion and ignorance so by uh, which is the last born um, of contact with the material mode of passion and later if if the lust means the desire so if it is fulfilled then that's fine and it leads to the one more uh, desire that is uh, again it's greediness it comes like one after the other and if it is not fulfilled then later it transform into wrath it's anger so and that is which is all devouring sinful enemy of this world and next in the 38 verse uh, krishna gives like three analogies so um, it it's clearly says like you know every the living entity is similarly covered how the similarly means that he gave, krishna gives three analogies dhumena vriyate vahnir vahni means fire dhuma means smoke so as the fire is covered by smoke and etadarsho malena cham so as the mirror is covered by mala means like a dust and as etol beina vrito garbhas garbha means the embryo and how the embryo is covered in the in the womb like you know uh embryo is covered by the womb so in this way so these analyses are going to help us to understand how lust is covered so in this way uh, the living entity is similarly covered by different degrees of this lust so there are different different degrees of the lust like you know what are these degrees uh, uh, um, propad um, explained in the purport um, there are uh, trees and uh, um the 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 degrees which makes uh, <coughs> uh human beings trees and uh, uh, animals so it's it's gives like you know human beings uh, are the thin and penetrate like you know their consciousness is covered with the, with the, the degree of that lust we can we can penetrate that one it's a thin layer but when we when it comes to the animal it's a thick layer it's tough to penetrate and when it comes to the trees it's a very very thick layer and it, even it's a time duration it takes time to penetrate uh, to uh, to come out of that consciousness so that's where uh, mm, the all three analyses has given and uh, prabhupada explained in the purport so in this way every living entity is covered by the lust and uh, this uh, this lust it's like you know nobody is going to escape from the lust each and every living entity is covered by the lust so we are not alone so lot of all the living beings in this material nature who are in contact with the material moods they covered by the lust with the different degrees but here we uh, we um, uh, discussed about the avarnatmika shakti and uh, prashepa uh, yeah prashepastika shakti also so um, then after that one what happens um, um, now we come to know lust is the one which is greatest enemy and lust is the one um, which covers the living entity in different degrees then uh, going to the 39th verse again avrutam how it covers is it this krishna describes again avrutam gnanam ete na so what covers what covers the lust is covering correct but what it covers then it gives the uh, 39 krishna gives avrutam gnanam etena gnanino nitya vairina avruta means covering gnanam etena the pure consciousness of the living entity is covered by this lust and gnanino nitya vairina gnanino the no the knower the who knows this one is nitya vairina so this lust is an eternal enemy of that person condition soul kama rupena kaunte ya how the cover is in the form of lust in the form of lust kaunteya is son of kunti dushpurena analena cha these are the qualities of the lust it never to be satisfied and analena cha it it burns by a fire like a fire so these are the two qualities like it's gives like you know the living entity is pure consciousness the pure consciousness is we are parts and parcel of krishna jeevere swarupo hoy krishna er nitya das so we are the servants of the krishna that pure consciousness is covered by this eternal enemy in the form of lust and that lust quality is it never satisfies and which burns like a fire so this one we discussed then after that one 40th verse so all this verse links like you know it's beautiful flow of verses which we can contemplate in our practical real life because 
every living entity goes through all these things so we can easily easily apply, apply uh, these uh, this gita wisdom to our practical life so then now we come to know what the lust is the eternal enemy and each and every living entity is covers with the different degrees and the lust covers the pure consciousness of the living entity and it never satisfies it burns like a fire then next then krishna gives where where the lust sits the lust sits indriyani mano buddhir indriya means senses mano mind buddhi intelligence these are the asya adhisthana muchate these are the sitting places of lust so lust, lust lust sits in these three things in our in the living entity then eter vimohayatesha so it it covers the real knowledge real vimohayati it bewilders gnanam avrutya dehinam it covers the real knowledge of the living entity and what what it makes it bewilders him it bewilders the living entity so now we come to know the sitting place of the lust so still till now the problem is explaining so what the first lust and uh, uh, um, it each and every living entity is uh, with different different degrees of lust then after that one what the qualities of the lust how what it covers in the living entity then next the sitting places of the lust so senses mind and intelligence then after that one in 41 krishna explains then how to conquer that lust <laughs> So it says, "Tasmatvam indriya nyadau." Tasmat, tasmat means therefore. It sounds like you know alert. So so far he explained so much about lust. Therefore he is telling like therefore, "Tham indriya nyadau." So in the beginning, indri indriya nyadau means the senses. So adau adau means beginning. So indriya nyadau niyamya bharatarshaba regulate regulate the niyama niyama means regulating bharatarshaba the one who is born in the bharata the descendants of bharata then papmanam prajahi heinam gnana vignana nashanam papmanam papman means this great the greatest symbol of sin so the lust is greatest symbol of sin prajahi prajahi means curb it so at the very beginning beginning stage only we need to curb that one how by regulating so that's what it says so gnana vignana nashanam so which is the killer of the uh, destroyer of the knowledge so it says therefore o arjuna best of the bharatas in the very beginning curb this great symbol of sin lust by regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self realization so lust is going to destroyer of knowledge and self realization so now the solution from 41 onwards it started the uh, solution for the th- for the problem then now first thing is first instruction is regulate the senses and uh, the key is at the very beginning curb this great um, symbol of sin that is lust then in 42 as we uh, as we uh, discussed in 39 like you now the sitting places of lust is indriyani manobuddhi so senses mind and intelligence these are the sitting places of lust so now krishna speaks about that one he in 42 krishna says indriyani paranyahur indriyebhya param manaha manasastu parabuddhi e buddhe parasastu sah para paratastu sah so it says the working senses are superior to dull matter so now in this 42 krishna is giving hierarchy so first in 41 he said that therefore you need to curb the lust in the beginning so curb means we need to stop we need to put like checkpoint then how can where to put checkpoint like the sitting places are three places um, senses mind and intelligence now krishna is giving hierarchy here so the working senses are superior to dull matter so as compared to dull matter senses are superior mm-hmm. then mind is higher than the senses in the hierarchy first matter then senses then above the senses the mind and the intelligence is higher than the mind and the soul is even higher than the intelligence so this is a kind of ladder hierarchy matter senses mind intelligence so now we come to know the hierarchy now so as uh, as krishna said in 341 curb uh, lust at the very beginning means we need to and to to krishna gave curb the lust and uh, at the very beginning and regulate the senses that's just two instructions so at the base step the ladder is there right as krishna gave but the base step is senses 
matter of course matter so senses are superior than the matter so at the base step at the very base step is senses so here uh, that's where the, the that regulate the senses when we when we regulate the senses it's going to help to the upper like you know levels also so that's why here this hierarchy is going to help to curb the lust at the very beginning so after knowing this hierarchy in 42 uh, now in 30 sorry 43 krishna is saying evam buddhe param buddhva so now we'll see the present verse so evam buddhe evam buddhe means thus to Param buddhva. Param buddhva means superior. Buddhi means intelligence. Samstha bhyatmanam atmana. So two atman. It comes here two atma. Samstha bhya atmanam atmana. So samstha bhya means by studying. So what we need to study? The mind. Atmana. Uh, sorry, atmanam. The mind. Atmana by deliberate intelligence. So we need to study the mind with param buddhva, with superior intelligence. Then Shatrum means conquer. Conquer Shatrum. Shatrum means enemy. Mahabaho. The word here uh, Krishna is calling Arjuna is oh mighty armed. Mighty armed means you know strength, physical strength, mighty armed Arjuna, right? So here the significance of this Mahabaho is um, Mahabaho is uh, your true your true glorify is conquering the formidable enemy lust so uh, krishna is saying to Arjuna, you are mighty armed you show your true glory you you show your uh, uh, you strength in uh, by conquering the formidable enemy of this lust so that's why it's called mahabaho kama rupam durashatam in the form of lust which is formidable durashatam so the translation it's saying um, uh, knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, mind, intelligence, oh mighty armed Arjuna, one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence. Um, and thus by spiritual strength, conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. So how can we conquer? The key word here is study by deliberate intel spiritual intelligence two are the key the key um these two are the key uh, in this verse so here um situate the mind on the spiritual level that's what krishna is saying here so how can we situate so even though this uh, yeah, these verses are like you know showing different to conquer the mind but it's conquerable that's why krishna is saying you conquer you conquer and uh, glorify your true glory by conquering this formidable lust so strive to conquer this enemy so one need to strive to conquer this enemy so here krishna is focusing more conquering the enemy uh, lust by spiritually situated so how Prabhupada explains in the purpose spiritually situated is by uh, krishna taking up the krishna consciousness so uh, it says like you know and direct our consciousness toward upwards to the soul. See, as I said, the uh, as uh, 3.42 Krishna says, the hierarchy senses, mind, intelligence, and soul. So we need to we need to uh, make our consciousness uh, direct towards to the upward, upward towards the soul instead of downwards towards to the sense objects. So but that's where here it's saying uh, study the mind and with deliberate spiritual intelligence. And intelligence means like. Um, so intelligence is the one which leads us, uh, which should lead us uh, towards to the implementation. So if we hear something or if we, uh, if we read something from the scriptures, the inclination comes to show our love towards to Krishna, then we implement by showing like, you know, by doing some austerity or by doing some uh, whatever like uh, devotional service we do. So intelligence lead, should lead to implementation. Then analysis. Analysis means how can I apply this verse this this Gita wisdom to my practical life that analysis should leads to application so analyzing analyzing like you know the um, connecting uh, to our practical life that leads to the application application means it's a practical life we can we can really see uh, um, actually these series of verses are helping me so much in my personal life 
definitely it's it's going to give um, uh, the solution for a lot of problems in our life because we we um, get through the uh, fights the in, within ourselves inner fights that's why in 37 like you know the kamayesha krodesa verse says that when inner enemies are most dangerous than outer enemies so we don't know outer enemies we can we can force here we can by seeing their behavior we can judge or we can take care steps to save ourselves but inner enemies are very very dangerous so most dangerous uh, inner enemies are the most dangerous than the outer enemies so when we contemplate this kind of gita wisdom then it gives a solution to that kind of enemies how to react when the enemy uh, inner enemy comes out from within us so those inner enemies are kama krodha lobha moha mada masharya so we all go through all these things as as it says in scriptures every living entity is covered by different degrees of lust but the degree is changes from one person to another person or from one living entity to another living entity so uh, these are the uh, things like uh, key verses here the samstabhyatmana sorry key word samstabhyatmana means steady the mind so when we when we recognize that object of our consciousness is mind because like you know we get lot of thoughts in the mind but the intelligence is the one which helps us to take a decision whether we can do it go go uh, go, go go ahead according to our thoughts in the mind do it or not do it so if we if so as as hierarchy says definitely intelligence is the higher than the mind so when we sharp our intelligence when we enlightened by the script, scriptures and hearing what will happen the intelligence is going to help to take decisions in our life so uh, take an example of like you know if we are if we, if we are have, we are like you know consider like if i am um uh, fever or something i'm going through some kind of health issues and i am i am in a diet i should not eat uh, milk products or something like that then when i was driving in the, on the road i see the pizza hut or something then if 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 the senses pulls me towards to go and buy the mind gets the thoughts okay yesterday it reduces the fever from morning no fever that's fine but uh, why can't i try go ahead and go it mind gives the thoughts we pushes us to go and buy the buy that thing but intelligence says no you get sick if you eat that one so you got an instruction already so that is the way that we can see the difference between mind and intelligence mind always takes like you know here and there it's trying enough krishna also says listen like, mm, Uh, arjuna says chanjalam hi mana krishna it's it's a very very stubborn and flickering and it's it's a, it's kind of a strong we can't we can't control the mind but at the same time when we enlighten our intelligence with the scriptures and spiritual uh, practices that is going to help to curb the mind or to help to take a right decision at the right time so mind is the one with the thoughts like it makes us uh, agitate so oh i don't have this oh why can't i buy this like that but at the same time intelligence at that time it it helps us to whether okay i'm getting this thought whether the whether that thing is need need me or i want it there is a difference between i want it or i need it need means it's we are going to use that one want means okay others have i too want to have or something like that so we need we normally give this kind of this want and need uh, to kids kids normally ask us all the things whatever they see in the shop so then we come to the uh, things to say so how we handle the kids that is the way we need to handle our mind so if if kid is uh, taking a knife immediately like an unexpectedly we left the knife somewhere and kid came a small um, a child came and a small child like uh, the child grabbed the knife then immediately mother how uh, a mother pampers the child okay like that it, but motivation is the mother's motivation is to take the knife safely out of the hands of the child but the way she pampers it's like you know it's a very smooth and everything then once the knife is out of the hands of child then she gives a lesson you should not take all these things like that so it's kind of pampering the child situation wise same thing we need to talk with our minds and we need to pamper sometimes the minds so until unless we don't give the higher taste see the mind always asks something and we need to find the replacement that replacement should give the higher taste for us so if if uh, if if uh, 
if any any uh, anyone like you know calls like you know any kind of uh, um, any kind of activity if it is going self centered and if it is a lust then we need to replace we don't want to do that one but we are getting the thoughts to insisting us to do then we need to replace that one with the higher intelligence higher taste things like uh, uh, that higher taste we read in a second chapter like you know vasavarjam rasopyasya param drushtva nivartate so we need to replace so mind if say no you should not go you don't do that when you have to sit and chant like that if you say that to the mind the mind does stubborn like you know we have seen lot of dramas and play uh, mind and me we, we have seen the stage shows like you know how, how the mind takes us while chanting or while doing spiritual activities so we heard the sentence also we are where the mind our mind is like you know sometimes we may present in one situation but mind is not there mind is going somewhere else mind can travel like you know as a wind like you know how uh, arjuna says so the, uh, from the mind i can go to uh, any other country at this present moment like you know so that is the fastest way uh, the thoughts goes in the mind but how can we how can sometimes when we get that kind of thoughts we need to replace that one by giving higher in, higher taste that higher taste is uh, sometimes like you know choosing so when the thoughts comes like that we have to choose krishna in that situation so like uh, um, like like whenever the situation comes like every time we choose krishna it makes a big step Uh, going forward to krishna when when things agitates us when the lust comes or something which is bothering us which we don't want to do sometimes we forcefully the thought comes repeatedly to our minds then we have to choose that time the krishna choosing krishna we need to make that one as a habit the so when we make choosing uh, krishna as a habit and that situation that that choosing krishna is going to help us to get rid of that um, uh, in, uh, for formidable enemy lust so before we reach krishna we need to choose krishna it means that we need to understand like you know give the higher taste basically higher taste krishna is the supreme lord and he whatever the with what whatever lust we have whatever desire we have we get happiness definitely but that is temporary but at the same time when we choose krishna at that time then what will happen krishna is the supreme then krishna gives the supreme happiness when when the mind gets higher taste then what will happen it goes towards to that one so that is the way choosing before we that that's what like choose we need to make a habit of choosing krishna in that situations so the choice is ours like you know as uh, gaur gopal prabhu says in alphabets b c d will come right a b c d so b for birth d for death c in the between between birth and death choice is ours c for choice so the choice is ours to choose krishna when when the when mind agitates or when lusty desires comes and agitates us we need to choose krishna choose we need to make habit of choosing krishna that makes uh, helps us uh, um, to get rid of that like you know to make ourselves like you know to go towards to krishna and choosing krishna it's not like a one time effort okay one time i chose krishna it's not like that so it's kind of a uh, we are struggling with the lust when we choose krishna that battle with the lust will become smooth then our struggle with the lust will decrease so because if we replace we, if we replace that lusty desires with the going to the uh, choosing a habit of choosing krishna that is going to help us to make the battle smooth with the lust so as we are like you know in the pandemic situation we normally everything is normal smooth and everything we get lot of things like you know if long weekend comes and we do that one that one and everything right but at the same time as we are like you know locked down now or not completely but little bit so but still like you know we are, we are dotailing we are we are replacing that situations with other things so when we give the higher taste like you know mm, so once uh, one devotee asked a question recently to maharaj maharaj said like you know i can't able to do much like you know i'm not able to go outside what can i do maharaj like that maharaj said when you can't go out then you go inward inward means like you know you think about yourself towards the spiritual journey you go towards to toward like you know think about yourself and invest your time to th- to make spiritual progress read study the spirit uh, prabhupad books and uh, and do the chanting or whatever like you know spiritual practices try to j- try to go inward 
so it which like you know it makes sense like you know if we normally we don't get like you know now we have we are all at home we get like some additional time to uh, do some activities which we can't do in the normal days at the same time like you know everything definitely everything has to go normal so that we can start back and one more thing it uh, says like uh, this is the time like you know when this we we have to take like you no know, life very seriously now as the situations are like this definitely we are going to take spiritual life as a serious so that's what here this lust is the as come uh, as um, uh, enemy of this world then we need to put the solutions towards to that one so the more we habitate choosing krishna the lesser the battle is then the when it doesn't mean the lesser battle is means the doesn't mean the temptation was not there but temptation still there also but inclination towards the temptation will get, will go down because um, uh, we are choosing krishna and krishna is all attractive so whatever whatever the we are expecting from this lusty desire whatever it is like you know that thing more, more than that thing by choosing krishna we will get by by choosing krishna what will happen that lower temptation by because it's a higher taste we are getting as compared to lusty desire what we are expecting with the desire so when we get that higher thing what will happen then definitely the lower taste will go off that is the one which is uh, uh, explained here so as the purport it says like you know the third chapter conclusively directed to krishna consciousness so how can we study the mind so we can't study the mind uh, um, by anything any other things like you need to we need to detail do, do uh, our desires and our senses mind towards to the krishna and by knowing oneself as the eternal servant of the supreme personality of godhead so that is the thing like jivera swarupa hai krishna ranitya das so then next it says uh, one is certainly influenced by propensities for lust and desire for dominating the resources of soft material nature so lording over this material nature that is the one which is going to make the the propensities towards the lusty desires then desire for overlording for sense gratification is the greatest enemy of the conditioned soul it already described that is a one the lust but the by the strength of the krishna consciousness one can control the material senses the mind and the intellect so this is the solution so by the strength of krishna consciousness so how the krishna consciousness gives the strength so it says uh, narottam das takur says like you know kama krishna karma arpani krodha bhakta dveshi jani so narottam das takur is saying he can use he is a devotee and he can use his kama kama means lust i will engage in offering the fruits of my work to krishna kama krishna karma arpani whatever activities i do that that like you know that lust i offer that fruits of work to krishna and krodha bhakta dveshi jani krodha means anger so i direct to my anger towards the enemies of the devotees and lobha sadhu sangye harikata lobha means greed so greed means i will engage by being greedy to hear the topics of lord hari in the association of the saintly person sadhu sangye so greed one should develop that laulyam so it says that one like you know tatra laulyam api mulyam ekalam so to attain the devotional service krishna bhakti to attain that one mulyam mulyam means the prize is to develop that laulyam the greed to hear the topics of krishna that's where here uh, narottam das takur is also saying so greed he will engage in uh, hearing the topics of lord hari then moha ishta labdha labdha bhini so moha moha means bewilderment will be manifest because i cannot immediately attain my worshipable lord he gets bewildered if he don't immediately attain the lord then mada krishna gunagani mada means madness will be there when i madly glorify the transcendental attributes of krishna so he is detailing all these things like you know then ni nijuk yeah niyukta kariba jata jata tatha it means in this way he will i will engage each of these in the service of lord krishna so this is the how like devotees like you know they detail all this kind of uh, whatever it's there even hanuman used his anger um, in the burning lanka right so yeah so in the lanka so in the in this way devotees use all this um, uh, <clears throat> all these things in the uh, service of krishna 
and at the same time in uh, in baja hure mana song is also it says govinda das so baja hure mana mana means mind so if you see all the acharyas previous acharyas they have written lot of songs um, related to mana man manas manasu or man uh, so even like you know you take different traditions of uh, uh, acharyas also they concentrated more on um, mind so that is the thing so bajahuri mana shri nanda nandana it says oh my just worship the lotus feet of the son of nanda which makes one's fearless so that is the one thing then uh, uh, then it says one more thing in mukunda mala shloka also it says like you know uh, kulashekar alwar he engages uh, um, his mind oh mind uh, one second i'm not so it says that when um, he engaged all his uh, senses in uh, krishna service so it says uh, o tang please constantly chant the mantra composed by krishna's name so it's he engaged his mind in uh, in uh, meditating uh, krishna's lotus feet and he engaged his tongue in glorifying krishna's name and he engaged his head in bowing down he engaged his hands in uh, um, in uh, palms to uh, pray offer obeisances like praying to krishna his body like you know he pay, he he engaged the whole body paying obeisances to krishna and uh, the, in this way he engaged all his senses like he wrote the verse in mukunda mala shlokam saying how he engaged he want to engage and he engages he uh, his ears in the, uh, hearing the descriptions of krishna so this is the how krishna consciousness is going to help us like you know by the strength of krishna consciousness one can control the material senses mind and intelligence so this is the one uh, then one may not give up the work like you know here it says it's a gradual developing process krishna consciousness so one can be by doing activities in krishna consciousness one can be situated in transcendental position because here it says oneself one has to know transcendental it means that we are not this body we are spiritual souls so just by knowing that one that is a basic step for the self realization so when we when we inquisitively uh, um, inquire about towards to the self realization then we come in contact with the acharyas and the scriptures then those are the one which is going to help us to make our intelligence as a study direct towards to the one's purity so so when we when we uh, practice this kind of uh, instructions which are given by in the scriptures which leads towards to the our purification so as a as a sum total of this chapter it is it which which krishna says karma yoga only but we by doing all these things which we which we do in our uh, practical survey uh, practical life in krishna consciousness which which is like a bhakti yoga so controlling senses mind and intelligence um, we uh, here it says like you know uh it is in the immature state of material existence philosophical speculations and artificial attempts to control the senses by the so called practice of yogic postures can never help a man towards spiritual life so as we are in kali yuga and uh, we can't have we don't have our life spans are pray and alpa isha shabda we we have very less life spans but one can't get one can't uh, um, achieve uh, the uh, spiritual life by the philosophical speculations and yogic postures so one can that's why chaitanya mahaprabhu prescribed like chanting of the holy name sankirtan yagna as the prescribed duty for the kali yuga so krishna consciousness like you know that's why that 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 uh, uh, sankirtan yagna is going to help us to control this material senses mind and intelligence so he must train in the krishna consciousness by higher intelligence so uh, one who is in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness means they have chosen that path with their higher intelligence because they are got connected to krishna so this is what i have from this verse so if anybody have any comments or questions if anyone have any realizations or connect applications when they applied these verses uh, they can share their personal experiences also thank you all hari krishna very nice well the you are right these are practical verses but how do we use our intelligence to overcome lust 
Oh, okay. How do you use intelligence means like when we hear about like, you know, we are hearing from, see, now you said like these verses are very practical to implement, right? So you got, then uh, we get connect these verses very easily to our practical life. It means that you are, we are using our intelligence, how to connect. We reflect ourselves in some situations of these verses. It means that our intelligence is working to connect that one. And at the same time, we know about who, who, who is Krishna and who we are, how we need to get connect. That is also intelligence. So that, that's where like, you know, when, it, when the choices comes, we need to give priority to the intelligence and that intelligence leads towards the implementation. That intelligence is awakened by hearing um, uh, from sadhus, uh, Guru Sadhu Sastra. Anyone have anything to share or realizations? Because everyone is tired this evening. Huh? Usually somebody has some questions. Don't know, yeah. Questions or realizations, anything, Mataji. Otherwise, I don't have a time to start next verse also. It's 10 minutes is there. Who was the Maharaj you were saying? Like, if you can go out, go in. Is that that? Mataji, can you repeat that one? Who is you said you said in some lecture if you cannot go out. Okay, Radhanath Maharaj Mataji. Oh, it was Radhanath. Yeah. Okay, let me pull that one. I have something to share then. Yeah, that would be nice if you yeah. can. Uh, so somewhere I kept uh, okay yeah, it says like no one uh, uh, the question for that one like as it is a pandemic we can't go outside what can we do then uh, Mara said you go in uh, you you go inward inward means like you know we need to invest our time towards the spirituality then uh, um uh, one more Prabhu, like one uh, one more thing in the lecture I heard, like, you know, it says we can do JBS, JBSs. JBSs means Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra and uh, Sudarshan. So Jagannath, like, you know, it says, I, it says that when we have to use our time and uh, um, increasing our abilities, like, you know, if we are, if we are doing Kirtan or if we want to learn some instrument, like Kartal or Mrutanga, invest this time to, um, uh, learn that things and do some uh, home kit then mm, and uh, uh, recently I was uh, um, uh, I saw a cartoon saying that one like Corona says like you know see I'm, I made like nobody go to the temple and Krishna as a cartoon like you know Krishna little Krishna that cartoon Krishna says you you made everybody don't know don't go to temple but I made every every home as a temple so it says like, you know, every, all the devotees, like, you know, they made every home as a temple like that. So basically it's saying all this, this time is like, you know, how, when the, when the archer, like, you know, pull the arrow backside, uh, when the archer want to target uh, the um, goal, goal, then he plays the bow and he pulls the arrow, uh, arrow, right? With the string of the bow. So that is, this is the time which we need to pull ourselves like that, like, you know, to make sharp, use the time in st uh, to study the uh, Srila uh, Prabhupada books and use the time to memorize the verses or to, to share or to learn together as a group or something like that, then use a uh, learn, uh, increase our abilities, uh, uh, how to, how to increase ourselves in serving Krishna, whatever it's a Kirtan or uh, whatever services we do, or um, develop a personal relationship with the deities, which you are worshiping. This is the time we you will get like, you know, you show our, your love to Krishna, you, whatever time we get. So increase your deity worship to get personal relationship with the deities 
so this these are the things like you know um, devotee shared in that class like you know this is the time we can use to do all these things that's what it says mataji thank you madam in a way this whole year we have been spending time on zoom calls right yes mother ji one way i can say i can say in in, in our practical like you know in our congregation we increase geeta sharing a lot we used to do like you know once in a week but we are doing as every day uh, so it helping me so much like you know to connect towards to words today like it's a sequence way almost all we started around 10th chapter or 9th chapter i forgot when the pandemic started then we finished all the things and again came back like you know again from stuff to starting so mm-hmm. normally uh, i don't do i don't do personally to read every day one one verse like discuss and at least hear a class in a sequence way but these zoom calls are helping me so much to link the verses and uh, it increases like you know here to more speakers so uh, like you no know, to hear like everyone's realizations to contemplate it's helping me so much and at the same time we get like you no know, association of pyari prabhu jiva mata ji for one hour weekly once and pyari prabhu twice in a week so we are learning normally we don't get a chance to sit and study the uh, books with the pyari prabhu and jiva mata ji that is also greatest thing we are uh, it's helping to do and and also the bhagavad gita verses even if you are hearing for the 10th time you're getting a different understanding right or or we or sometimes i feel i never got it <laughs> that's very you, true you feel like you're still kind of getting it trying to absorb it for the first time yeah yeah and these last series verses are like all the purports are right different. i mean how many times have we heard about lust and conquering lust does that mean that we have conquered it you know absent so there's always yeah. still more to learn every single time we hear it you know yes mataji and this last series is really helped me in my practical life so this is the where like you know when i when i when i connect to krishna consciousness first two verses i can contemplate is dhyato vishayan pumsa that's two two twin verses krodad bhavati sammoha those two mm-hmm. then after that one second series is uh, this last series like from, from starting to end then I, mm-hmm. when every living entity is covered with different degrees of lust means then i felt okay i am not alone all the living entities are with me <laughs> <laughs> I feel that then after that one when krishna gives the solution to control and everything so with devotees mercy after that one reading reading so everything solutions really gita helps a lot as gita says it's a manual for the um, living human uh, human life means really really this this is the how we can contemplate so remaining verses also we can contemplate but this is the direct thing which we can contemplate we can reflect ourselves in our life once in a time like you know i i'm saying about myself i can reflect so many times like you know i can see myself in these verses right and how it unwillingly pulls you right yes it says like even without your wanting to it still pulls you and it's a lust is what that does it and where does lust reside you know the senses mind and intelligence yes i think is dhyayato contemplating contemplating is the key there so even if you see something and go off that's okay but when we contemplate get the thing repeatedly thinking about that one that's where the root comes like you know for the last and everything so normally to not to contemplate is it's really really tough thing and definitely krishna consciousness practice is going to help us mataji Okay, two more minutes is there. I don't have anything to share. Like you know, I stopped a little early today. I like today's class. That point is like choosing Krishna. We can reach Krishna yeah. when yeah, we like choose Krishna. Yeah, that's when that we have the choice. 
choose Krishna. So when the lusty desires comes, when the agitation comes and within us, choose Krishna. It's very, very tough, like, you know, but still like, you know, choose, we need to choose, give priority to Krishna. If something, some thoughts make to do like something which we don't want to do externally, but we, it makes inside like, you know, go do, do like that. Then we need to choose Krishna, do some devotional service or cook something for Krishna or whatever devotional service we can do, we can, we can do. Then that, that is going to help that time. So I like that when I heard in the class. And someone sent uh, in Connecticut congregation, uh, you can do your 108 beads chanting nicely or you can yeah. choose 8 million 400 thousand yeah that is also nice <laughs> that scared the heck out of me <laughs> so struggling with 108 beats is better than like better you know, than choose the body choose in 8 million, million yeah, a body from 8 million 400 thousand species Okay, Matajis, um, if no one has anything uh, to share, I thought of I'll hear more today, like, you know, as these are contemplating, like, you know, easy to contemplate, yeah. but uh, I think uh, everyone is busy or. Uh, they look easy, but they're not easy to practice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's explained so nicely, but it's so difficult still to. Still hope. That's why Krishna says, like Mahabaho, you show your true glory by conquering this formidable lust. So Krishna is saying it's it's not impossible, it's possible, but we need to show our, like, you know, choose Krishna, like we need to choose the choice towards to Krishna. Yeah. So choice is our, but definitely it's not, Krishna never says it's not like impossible. Krishna is saying it's possible. So there is a hope to do that work, but thing is we need to put our efforts. Thank you, Vallabhi Gopi. Very nice class. And I think, sure. uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's very difficult because as we surrender to Krishna, it is moment to moment surrendering, you know. It is like every moment, every second we have to make that uh, decision you know we have to take the decision or commitment it's like not easy and same time lust is very very like as krishna speaks you know lust is like uh, you know different degrees kinds like how it is covered like you know like a smoke like a fire smoke and or like a, you know dust of the mirror something like that so different degrees the lust is there so the enemy is weak then we it's easy to fight with the enemy and win over but if enemy is strongly you know there then it's very hard to uproot that enemy out so only with the mercy and association of devotees in lord krishna and you know constantly reading and uh, contemplating will help us uh, but it's long way to go it's not easy because you know it's a moment to moment because sometimes the modes are also acting upon you, right? It's not that always we are under the mode of goodness. We fluctuate between passion and ignorance. And sometimes like, you know, only devotional service is transcendental platform. But other than that, you know, we are all struggling with these modes too. And then there is this lust, biggest enemy. Yes. <laughs> so it's very hard, very, very tough to fight enemy, you know. Yeah, but with but you, helping each other, staying in association, I think it will help all of us win over this enemy. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. You brought a nice point. Like you know, when we know the strength of the enemy, then only we can fight properly. Definitely, the the warrior, the warrior who is there in the battlefield, he has to know the strength of the enemy too, so that he he come to know with whom he is fighting. So in the same way, we should know the strength of the tower, like you know enemy then that's why like you know we have daily sadhana so that daily sadhana each and every uh, moment when whatever devotional service the regulation of uh, devotional service which prescribed by Srila Prabhupada that is going to give strength when the enemy attacks 
So as you said, definitely the modes are there 24 by seven and uh, all days. So every time that they are doing their work, but at the same time, we have to increase our strength. As the, as the enemy is getting strong with these modes, definitely we have to get strength enough to fight with the enemy, right? So that strength comes with our daily practice. How serious, how, how conviction or whatever, how determined, how commitment we are towards to the daily sadhana, that is going to give, help us to fight that enemy when it, it attacks. So it, it's not like, you know, today I'm chanting and it's, uh, it's nothing is happening. It's everything is going fine. That's okay. But when the things comes, all this daily, daily devotional service is going to give us the strength to fight to that situation. So each and every second, whatever the regulation we are doing in our daily life, like, you know, following for regulative principles, chanting minimum 16 rounds and eat, taking only prasadam. And these are our strengths. These are our strengths. When we increase, when we, when we make a serious seriousness in this process, that gives the strength to fight against the enemy. But that enemy can attack. It's not like a time, I, it will come this time, it will come that time, no. But as that, they, we don't know when that is going to happen, but we regulate, we do daily our sadhana, that sadhana is going to give us the strength to fight with this against enemies. It may be lust or it may be anger, whatever it is. So we need to accumulate the strength. That's how Prabhupada says. What is the secret of behind your success means Prabhupada said, beat back. So our beat back is our like, you know, one, our, success, our, our secret. So we need to accumulate the strength physically, how much, sorry, um, spiritually, how much we can. So when the situation ups and downs comes, that is our strength. Thank you. Nice points. And uh, I think it's like our immunity, you know, the stronger our immunity, that is how our body can fight the virus in present situation. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I also liked Sri in one of the morning classes. She said, you know, sometimes we said, okay, this little bit of Maya, I will do. That's okay. <laughs> That's my problem. You know, like this is just a little bit of Maya, you know, we're going to do this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mind trick, Pataji. It's a mind trick. It keeps building oh, up. You know? <laughs> only one time. Why can't I do this time? It's okay. Little bit, right? But it's a mind trick. <laughs> so when we need that time, like you know, sometimes, like, you know, I, as we understood, like this last series, I explained to her too. So uh, sometimes, like, you know, when we read or something, when we chat together or when we read or something, or I, I, then I'll ask, like, you know, is your mind is here? Then she says, yeah, it's here only like that. So it's not like, you know, are you hearing or something? I don't ask, is the mind is here like that? And no, yeah. Yeah, sometimes she asks something. And then I say that one, your mind is saying you want that one, but your intelligence is saying you don't want that one. Then she says sometimes, oh, really? <laughs> then like, you know. So yeah, it's a, it's correct way when we when we implement this thing together with the peers or like you know when we understand this. Work. Yeah, it's it's harder for people who are, yeah, especially for people who are not amongst Krishna conscious people all the time. It, it I could relate to that very much when Sri said that you know, oh yeah. this this one time I'll just eat out or this one time I'll go to a movie this one time you know like all these things. Yeah. Uh, just one time, you know, like a little bit of Maya, you think, but it builds up, you know. Yes, Mataji, really. And uh, one one analogy I play with her also, like, you know, I heard Trunavarta. Trunavarta is a demon, right? Krishna killed. Truna means like a dust. Varta means like, you know, who uh, rotates in a circular so if if something is going if, if it's agitated some mind and you know, sometimes like something happens or something whatever it's there then i'll say to her my in the mind my trunavarta is rolling in my mind like you know it's a she'll understand oh okay it's a, it's some kind of thing why can't you listen a lecture like she will say so like that like you know we both like you know pulls all the these kind of things like you know it's it's helping each other's way very true Shri Mataji, it's 8 10. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for your comments and uh, uh, our association. We we'll offer prayers to all the Sambul Vaishnavas. Vancha Kalpa, Tarubya Shaka. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.